My name is Eugene Hernandez, director of the New York Film Festival, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here to talk about one of our spotlight films, major highlight of the 58th New York Film Festival. Um, On the Rocks is having its world premiere at this year's New York Film Festival. We couldn't be more proud to have um, Sofia Coppola back with us at Lincoln Center, although in this case, in a virtual context. Uh, so first of all, congratulations and welcome back, Sofia Coppola. Thank you. We're so happy to be a part of the New York Film Festival this year. Thank you for sharing the movie with us. Uh, thrilled to have some key collaborators uh, who folks, folks who are watching this or listening to this Q&A have just uh, experienced in the movie itself. Rashida Jones, Bill Murray, and Marlon Wayans. Welcome, congratulations also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Eugene. Thank you. Happy to be here. Really, really happy to have you here. Um, you know, I think I'm going to start with a question for Sophia and ask about kind of the origins of the of the movie um, and um, just to kind of get a sense of um, the sort of early Sophia, some of the the early sparks or the early threads. Do you do you can you share with us a little bit of sort of some of the origin? of it, uh, of this idea, and did it start with the place? Did it start with a character? Or did it start with a type of a relationship? Um, where did it begin? Yeah, I, um, it started with a friend telling me a story about her and her playboy father spying on her husband and they were hiding in the bushes. And I thought, oh, I, I would love to see a buddy movie, a father-daughter buddy movie. And it made me think of The Thin Man, which is one of my favorite movies. And it just always stayed in my head because, um, you know, of course, I'm interested in that relationship. And I thought if you could, and I, I thought about conversations with my dad talking about men and women and relationships. And if I could try to put some of that into, you know, a kind of fun adventure around New York. And I've been living in New York the last 10 years and, and how, I could, how I could try to do my version of New York and capture what we love about New York and, and get to work with Bill again and, um, and, and I, I worked with Bill and Rashida together on the, on the Christmas show that we did. And I thought they had such a great chemistry and uh, rapport together. So if I could do something with them along these lines. And um, so that was the starting point. And, and did, the, did the idea always, uh, you said you've been in New York 10 years and we're at the New York Film Festival. So did the idea always um, have to be in New York? Yeah, I was also thinking about great films like Tootsie that were, had the energy of New York and were, uh, you know, a sophisticated, smart comedy and kind of missing that kind of, that kind of a film. And, and, and just living in New York, trying to kind of capture how I, you know, what I saw in New York and how the places that I love, the kind of, the, and the blend of the old New York with um, this young woman living downtown in a world that is, you know, familiar to how, to me. Um, and, and also how there's been so, so many iconic movies about New York. I was nervous about how could I make it not look like um, a fake version of one of these great New York movies. And so, so how, to, how to hopefully bring, be able to do it in my way and, and capture what I love about New York and those kind of more kind of classic comedies with heart and, and keeping, you know, the feeling of, of family and relationships in there too. And I also well, have memories of, of um, in, as a young woman, like in my 20s, having martinis with my dad and him telling me, you know, I, I remember there was some guy that I thought he liked me and then he disappeared and I didn't understand. And he was like, well, let me tell you how some men think about things. And, and, and so I just um, <laughs> I always remember this kind of you know, getting information from my dad and, and his and his pals that were like uncles to me and their point of view. and and um, how specific that was and trying to incorporate that. Yeah, great. Um, Bill and Rashida, a, a kind of similar question about origin, uh, about the, the kind of start of this um, adventure for you all. Uh, tell me about maybe an early conversation you had with Sophia or with each other that, that, sort, of, um, that sort of crystallized why this would be an interesting opportunity for you, why you'd want to play uh, these roles opposite each other uh, and, and in such strong, you know, there's such a strong bond between these two characters. And um, I'd love to know just sort of what drew you to them and also how you two sort of uh, talked about it early on. You're, you're going to take that? 
<laughs> well, well, I can take one that makes no sense, but maybe you're always, you know, you always, you're always so. Well, I was just told by Sophia that there was a movie, and it, and I would be work, I would be, and it was with Rashida, and I thought, great, I'm due for that kind of a romantic film, you know, someone you know just from the other coast, you know, that kind of thing. And then she told me that no, she's with Marlon, man. She's with Marlon. She's not with you. You're the dad. That's all I'm going to say in the whole rest of the afternoon. You guys keep talking. I'm still not right. He's still not over it. <laughs> he also doesn't believe that's what the movie's about. That's that's perfect because in the in the film, my dad <laughs> says to me, Felix says, she thinks you're my girlfriend, which feels like you know the perfect thing for him to say to his daughter because it sums up his worldview about women and men. Um, and I also, you know, I have a incredible, magnanimous, charming, world traveling, food and love loving father myself. Um, so it was something I could relate to really quickly, but obviously Bill is, um, he is, uh, but he's not just like I, he's an icon, obviously, who's graced us with his presence, but also he's an incredible partner, scene partner, and um, and just so light on his feet and with his emotions in a way that is, you know, it's just in incredibly um, refreshing to, to be around and to act opposite because he just made me better in every way. But I do think it's, you haven't seen this relationship. Oh, Marlon, are you talking? Where I like to drag her down and challenge her in every scene <laughs> no. and, and do the opposite of Bill because I'm heavy on my feet and I just like to swallow and take and just make it fucking terrible and just let her just drag us out. You make it hard. Head. You make it really hard. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But I rose to the occasion still. As you always do. <laughs> Uh, no, but the point being, I, I, do, I don't feel like you've quite seen a, a father-daughter relationship like this in a movie. And, I, and, it's, and it's so nice because I, I relate to it, but also I think a lot, of, a lot of women relate to this, which is there's a generational difference in communication and, and you love your dad and you, and you respect them and you see the world through their eyes and then you become a woman and you realize that maybe you have a different idea of, of how the world works and watching those two philosophies kind of like butt heads is what really um, got me interested. I really love about this movie. As I'm, as I'm, thank you, as I'm laying the foundation for this conversation, Marlon, it's a similar question for you about sort of, uh, and maybe expanding on the question, not only of, of, of uh, kind of an early conversation you might've had either with Sophia or Bill or Rashida about, about your character and their relation uh, your relation to them, their their character relation to to yours, um, but also um, maybe about some of the uh, some of the other topics we're already we're already touching on, and that is the kind of whether it's the generational divide or it's the dynamic between uh, between men and women, and what a great you know what a great driver of of both comedy and drama those relationships can be. I'm curious how you um, what you grabbed onto initially. Um, I mean, when I read the script, what I really loved was the. Uh... I loved how they were, <laughs> the father and the daughter were <laughs> chasing and following this man around. And, you know, it's like your worst nightmare for your husband to be cheating on you. But what I loved is that at the end of the day, he wound up being a good guy. And I love the fairy tale of that, you know, sometimes that we're caught up in our own insecurity of ourselves, that it makes us look at our partner in a way that is untrue and unfair. And it's just a reflection of how you feel about yourself. And he's not doing those things. And sometimes, and I've been through those things in my life, uh, even though I'm more Felix than I am Dean, um, I do, you know, I, I just embrace the fact that Dean was a good guy at the end of the day that loved a woman. And sometimes your relationship goes through things and all the work he's doing, he's just trying in his own way to compare to a father because it's hard when you have a, a big 
figure like that as your dad. You know, it must be hell for Dean, but there's a point you realize that I'm not him and I'm not gonna, I can't fight those battles. Those are battles for you to fight. I'm just here to love you as hard as I can, the way I can. Beautiful. Great. Yeah. That's great, man. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm and gonna I can only apply that to real life relationships. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot to Sophia and Bill and um, switch gears a little bit and ask the two of you, your relationship, the fact that you have this creative relationship and this personal relationship, this friendship that's, that spans a period of time now. I wonder how the two of you collaborate, how you work together, how you might push each other creatively. Um, what kind of, uh, it's hard to describe a shorthand, but, but maybe the, the elements of that, relate, that creative relationship the two of you have and how you, how you sort of evaluate it, how you see it. Uh, I feel so lucky that Bill shows up and puts his heart into into what we're doing and it always surprises me and the other actors it's always fun because Bill brings um, surprises and always has great ideas to improve things and 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 he's so unique there's no one else um, I think this this part was could have been unlikable and it, and it needed Phil's lightness and and heart to to bring to bring it to life and um, and yeah we I oh and I I always love working with Bill and I I'd never I was always nervous to do another movie with him because people love him in Lost in Translation I thought oh we're never that was just a something that happened we'll never be able to do that again and then after all these years I thought you know what I love working with Bill if if he'll have me I would love to do something at this different stage in our life and it's not going to be that but um but it was. Uh, it's always fun to dress Bill up too. <laughs> I think he's a good sport about letting us dress him up in my fan, you know, my fantasy version of this character. And um, but it's always it's always just so much fun, and also um, he brings such depth to to what we're doing that I really uh, count on him. Bill, I'll well, let me stop. You. I'm just kidding. I think we're all having a little trouble keeping our our lunch down. Uh, but I have the same problem with Sophia. I enjoy working with her very much, and uh, there is a lot of freedom. The script is very well written. It's loose, and I and I would say I, I enjoy, even though I only got to do one dance numbers of uh, dance line scene with Marlon the whole movie practically. We had like a dance number we did coming in. Yeah. Out of the but I, I really enjoyed this experience very much. <clears throat> and um, uh, we're going to make uh, sequels to this. We're going to make a Thin Man series that's going to follow this. And oh, yeah. We're going to be detectives. Make it a double. It's going to be really great. Look, look for it. It's coming. But um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I like working with Sophia a lot. It's fun. And, and I, feel like, uh, I feel like an extra AD on a set. Like, uh, not that she doesn't get what she wants. I just don't want anybody messing on her at all. I don't want to on the oddballs out there. So I feel like, I do feel like either her father or her big brother or something like that. Not like a big brother, I guess, but I feel like a big brother just kind of muscling people around, just trying to keep order in the court. It was a kind of a tough job because, you know, yeah. Marlon and Rashida had, there were kids around and there were scenes with lots of kids. And, you know, so it was, it was crowd control. It wasn't so much directing. It was really... Um, Prisoner of war camp, not exact, not not in the best sense. <laughs> just deten detention centers, not really prison. Just detention centers. We had lots of kids and children, and, and there, there seemed to be animals in the movie too. I don't know why there were dogs all around all the time. And, you know. Anyway, so I felt like I was. I like that. I like that feeling of serving. Like I like to help out. You know, sort of. I'm not exactly a policeman, but I'm uh, you know sort of unauthorized auxiliary. I show yeah. up when there's an emergency. You keep it running smoothly. It's true. You help us keep it going. Mm -hmm. And we, there's always something happening. There's always a bunch of excitement on the street. It's always bubbling. Something queer would come along. It was fun to be. It was yeah. exciting to be shooting on the street and That's late it. at night driving the car around. So. Yeah, we get, we got shut down, but you guys in New York. With you went too late, or you just veered off course? No, we well, went too late, but we kept going. We went too late, and there was a kind of a, a loud little spunky car involved that Bill 
you know, Bill was enjoying the Alfa Romeo, um, maybe past the boundaries of what, uh, of filming. So the joy writing was also part of, part of getting a shutdown, but that's okay. It was like a fun car, Bill, that, that Alfa Romeo. It was, there was one that ran and one that did not sort of. So the one that ran was souped up. It was over souped up. So when you gunned it, you roared around a little bit, made a lot of noise. And, uh, the local cop on the on the beat, he, he took exception to to he thought I skidded too, which I kind of did, but it was a controlled skid. Come on, it was, it was wet out. We would wet down the streets or it would rain, and so you hit the bricks down in Soho. You hit the bricks, you move a little bit. It's okay. He didn't think I was okay. <laughs> did you have to uh, charm him a bit the way your character does in the movie, or did you have any luck with that? Uh, no, my charm was lost. I didn't even get to him. Other people tried to charm yeah. him before I got there. And it, was, it, was, it, was, it was done. It was done. You're all done. Lock it up. Lock it up. Go home. Good night. <laughs> it was one of those kind of things. Somehow we got it all um, done. But there was yeah. no, these guys had to be in a car at I'm night in the rain seen. a lot. <laughs> but the yeah. truth is, like, that, that, that sort of, that Felix charm, Sophia, whether or not you admit it you have some of that too like you <laughs> Sophia has Sophia is a universe and when you enter the orb there is this feeling that like you know you're you're on you're on her set and it's her atmosphere and it's like this kind of quiet control quiet control and charm so everything within that it does it functions it functions in a, at a different speed with like a different frequency in a way that's so it like awe-inspiring to watch because it's really just in this like in this circle in her you know in her production orb it's nice to watch she's just such Thank the you. good kid that she can't do anything bad so you just <laughs> whatever she wants to do you <laughs> sure she gets all raised go for it it's just a joint it's nah. just a joint every kid has to have a release <laughs> we just we just try to make it make it fun and as much as make it as fun as we can well you do that's you interesting do. what you see about okay. uh, about the time rashida because in all in the locations uh eugene we were in a lot of interesting locations like private clubs and, and you know special places to eat and dine and drink and behave and so forth and just taking them over is an act of insurrection. Anyway, to take over these clubs and the 21 restaurant, whatever, it's sort of a, only movie people would have the nerve to sort of think we could take this thing over, sort of. But the, but the entrances and exits, and Marlon and I had a movie exit just walking in and out of like a building on the street, but all the walking in and walking out, there seemed to be no, the time did sort of stand still, like Rashida said, and so much happened in that movement and those passages of entering and, and, and leaving these spaces. And ordinarily in life, when, for myself anyway, when I go into some sort of fancy pants place, I want to just get in, sit down by my menu, you know, and order some food. I don't want to clown around too much. I don't want to make a, you know, I don't, I don't have any noisemakers or anything. But in, in this film, we were sort of obliged to take the time to really enter the space and to bring yourself into everything, like what she said. And uh, just, it, it, so much happened in that time that, we went to, that I ordinarily, if I wanted to slow down and speed up, it, that Sophia slowed down. A lot happened in, even in Mexico, the sort of entrances in Mexico were sort of prolonged and elongated and, and they, they gave you time to reassemble yourself, reassemble your feelings as, as the scene developed. It was an interesting way of looking at, at movie making. Scene building. I want to get back to you know what New York one more time. Oh, I yeah. thought I thought my I thought I'd gotten boring and the sound had stopped because I heard there was no <laughs> sound that when I did it. Really no, you'll you'll you never know which one it was. 
You never know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. But I did want to come back to New York one more time before we uh, before we wrap up because this is the New York Film Festival and it, this is I think you you absolutely achieved your goal, Sophia. If that is to create an I you know a New York a movie that has such a strong connection to a city, the, the city's a character in this film, to me at least, and for people that live there, I think that we'll find that. But I wanted to give any, any of you the chance to sort of talk about, about New York as, as a place, whether it's a place that you filmed this movie, you could talk about that, you could talk about it as a place that, what it means to you as a, as a city or a place to make a movie or other movies that are important to you. I think it's just, you know, we're at the New York Film Festival, your film is premiering uh, as a spotlight of the New York Film Festival. So I just wanted to give you a chance to talk about about the city and about New York and you know New Yorkers are listening are going to be listening to this so yeah and Marlon grew up in New York do you want to yeah I'm born and raised man in, in New York on uh, 16th Street and 9th Avenue now it's uh it's called the projects back then and now they gentrified and you know there's a point like now it's like Chelsea it's like I, all my street cred is gone because the city's so different, but the same. And so I can't even be like, I'm, I'm hood. I'm from the projects. Like, you're talking about from the meatpacking district? Get out of here. So um, New York has changed so much, but still the identity of New York is the same. And that's, um, I mean, the soul of the city. Uh, and New York is just like the most realest people. Like when you're filming, they're disrespectfully respectful. They're like, yo, yo, you're doing <laughs> Yo, give me your autograph. Yo, you are filming right now. All right, after you, after you say cut. So they're, they're respectful, <laughs> disrespectful. And that's what I love about New York. It's just the realest place in the world. And I love that it plays a character in the movie. And, um, and the way Sophia kind of films the movie, you're just like, it feels like you're walking down the streets of New York. You're just a fly on the wall, flying through the city of New York, watching this relationship with this woman and a father and a husband and the kids and it's you know it's very voyeuristic and um i just i just loved how she filmed it and filmed it in that city and i think everybody from new york's gonna be proud to see um this kind of movie taking place in our city thanks yeah i hope that while we can't all be together and in restaurants and walking around in that carefree way that i hope that um when you watch the movie you, you get to kind of slip back into what well, that part of New York that we love with the energy and, and I love these old, these old places with so much history that the table at 21 what with where Bill and Rashida were talking really was the table that Humphrey Bogart uh, proposed to Lauren Bacall and the, and the waiter I remember one night he told me that he remembered Lauren Bacall coming back and standing at the bar and looking at the table years later and he 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 watched her just looking at the table and slipping off and just all the, the history of, of these places. And, and then Bill, of course, I have great memories of driving around New York at night with Bill. I think he made me like stand out of this, a sunroof and, um, and uh, driving around with Bill at night in New York is a, is a memorable thing. So um, to try to kind of cap capture that feeling of going around New York with, with Bill too. And, and where I live now is near, uh, near where the old blues bar was, I remember going as a kid, and um, and and I, and off and on we you know visited New York and lived in New York, and it always um, there's nowhere else like it. So I, I'm so happy that we got to make our film there. I thought it was so great. One of the loft that we was filming at was right across the street from one of my childhood friends' mom's place, and she would you come down. Coming and, back. Yeah, <laughs> Judy, and she'd come down. My friend Apu, um, her mom, because I grew up in New York, and I used to hang out in the down in Soho and or Wooster and so that's where their house was and so she would she would come and she would uh, she would come and she'd watch us film and it, it was a lot of fun and just be oh you're gonna film now okay I'm gonna go back upstairs tell me when you're done come up and have a drink or appetite like, she would come down and be like was. where's Marlon she would come down <laughs> asking for you yeah <laughs> so it's just good to film in the city you know in my own stomping ground Rashida, Bill, what do you think about New York as a creative place, as a, as a place of inspiration, or, or just a place that you have a connection to? I I love New York. I've lived there. I lived there for eight years. I moved there after college. I, I was convinced I'd never live anywhere else again in my life. I have a relationship with New York where it's like, it's like a really 
fun, charming, charismatic lover. We're like, we wake up one morning and it's the best day of our lives. We have the best day and it's sunny and we have a drink and we run into people. And then the next morning we wake up and it's stormy. It's emotionally stormy. It's actually stormy. People are yelling at me. Um, can't get a cab, you know, getting drenched, getting stuck. And, you know, but that's, but that's the beauty of New York is it has, it's, it is just, um, it's kinetic. It's kinetic in a way that no other city is. And it, and it kind of informs your emotional path that day, like depending on what the city gives you. And I, I love that about New York. Love it. As much as I love New York, I never thought about sleeping with her. I just, uh, that was a well, great we're answer. different that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, it's because it's so romantic and it's passionate. I don't have, yeah. I don't have middling feelings about New York. Like I have very clear, passionate, emotional feelings about New York always, whatever they are at the time. Like no other city does that to me. Yeah. Yeah. It sort of forces you to engage with it because you never know when someone's going to yell something at you. And <laughs> you're, um, yeah, it is like nowhere else. Bill, Sophia and, talked and about you and Moody. Bill, you talked about, uh, Sophia talked about you taking her around the city. Was, was there a part of New York you were trying to show her or was there something specific you wanted to introduce her to or just kind of enjoying that uh, experience? Well, it's nice to take people um, and do things that are sort of paralegal. That's the way I like to look at it, paralegal. Like, uh, they, they, they may not be legal now, but they were legal once upon a time, <laughs> maybe in the 17th century. You know, but so you, and so when you encounter the, 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 uh, the forces of, 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 of order, you can say, well, we always used to come here. You know, you can just say that kind of thing and people go, oh, this, this person's been here longer than I have. But it used to be fun to drive all the way down to the bottom. I used to take people on my tour of New York and, go down to the fire station down by uh, at the battery and just drive up into the thing and see the Statue of Liberty and, and just sit there until someone's, you know, honk the horn or said, what are you doing here? And you say, I was just looking, you know, whatever. But I, I used to, the, the five boroughs, when I was on Saturday Night Live, they used to give us a limousine on the weekend because so that we wouldn't get arrested. We were looking for a cab. And so oh, my friends would all come from Illinois. Yeah, they'd come from Illinois and they'd have a, like a limousine that had a sunroof, you know, a moonroof. And, and I made a point of taking my grade school friends around, like just going over all the bridges with standing up through the roof, you know, and, and just like a couple, and other New Yorkers look at me like, yeah, right, okay, you got a roof. I see that, I see that, you know, just driving by. <laughs> just, just encounter the street, was fun, but the making, working in New York, I, I, I started getting emotional when you start talking about the city because I can't wait to see the movie. I feel like people in the city will have missed the city in a way in this, these last six months. They'll, they'll have missed seeing their city, you know? And uh, the film does a good job of showing the city and showing the life of the city. And uh, I, I can't wait to see it just from that aspect, just to look at it as a New Yorker. I mean, I lived in New York oh, 35 years or something like that before I was asked to leave. By, but it was, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. I, I think New Yorkers are going to love the movie. You know, I didn't realize you lived in 16th and 9th. My friend Bob Tischler used to be, live down there. I, but, and it's true, like you say, you know, people get their, their crepes down in that neighborhood. You know, they get their, like, their French pastries in the neighborhood. It was not that way in the 70s when I used to go down there. It was different. Not at all. Um, That's when they got their drugs. I was happy. I'm really happy whenever <laughs> anyone says you want to work in New York. It's great. Well, it's, um, it's been a true pleasure and honor to have this film premiering at the festival and to be part of the festival. I know it's a different kind of festival this year. And at the same time, I think what Bill was just saying is so deeply resonant because it's crazy to think that a movie that was filmed not that long ago can already feel nostalgic and for, it can show us a city that we, all, you know, we don't want to forget it was there or existed. Um, so I think that this film does reconnect us with a city at this moment, Sophia. So congratulations to you and Bill, Rashida, Marlon, to all of you on your work. 
congratulations. Thank you. And thank, thank, you. thank you for sharing the movie thank with you. us. Thank you. Thanks thank for having you. us. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for including it. us. Congratulations. <laughs>